A decisive moment in the race to be the next Prime Minister, arriving as ballots land on Tory doorsteps. Foreign Secretary, good evening. Liz Truss, the undisputed frontrunner. Hey, Charlie, you're right. Rishi Sunak struggling to close the gap. Tails never fails. Do you want to go first or second? I want to go first, please. There okay. we go. An early victory for the Foreign Secretary. But under the studio spotlight with 80 mostly undecided party members, the tough questions began. The Bank of England have said that a recession is inevitable. What could you do to Im mitigate the impact of this? Well, what the Bank of England have said today is, of course, extremely worrying. But it is not inevitable. We can change the outcome and we can make it more likely that the economy grows. And on the Foreign Secretary's first big stumble this week on public sector pay, an admission but no apology. Liz, why did you announce a well-researched and fully costed policy in which you openly said you valued the work of teachers, nurses and police officers in Newcastle, where I work, less than you value those in Guildford, for example? Why should we trust your judgment? Immediately, as there were concerns expressed about this policy, I said we're not going ahead with it. You said that public sector pay policy has been misrepresented by the media. Here's the proposal that you released. Introduce regional pay boards tailoring pay to the cost of living where civil servants actually work, saving up to £8.8 .8 billion pounds per year. So how have we misrepresented you so far? Can I be clear, Kay? that I'm not going ahead with this you policy. You can, but you said you were because, misrepresented. I'm just clarifying. Because, because of the concerns that have been expressed. A quick fire round and a possible hostage to fortune. Uh, what's the naughtiest thing you've ever done? <laughs> I'm, certainly, I'm certainly not going to say that on TV. Oh, was it that naughty? <laughs> well, my daughters are watching, so I don't want them, <laughs> I don't want them getting any ideas, Kay. Yeah. Is there anything that you feel that you would want to come clean with the audience here in the studio and at home? Because there's no-one else listening, so it's all <laughs> fine, I can just tell. Anything that you need to get off your chest? There are, I can tell you, Kay, there are no skeletons in my closet. Liz Truss wants to be seen as a candidate to change the course. Her own path, though, hasn't run straight. You were a Remainer. And now you're not. You supported uh, Brits to fight in Ukraine, then you didn't. You wanted to build on the Green Belt, and now you don't. You wanted to abolish the monarchy, and now you don't. You wanted to arm Taiwan, and now I'm not sure if you're saying whether you do or not. You wanted civil I'm servants. We, we do provide them okay. with those. You facilities. wanted to cut civil servants' pay in the regions, and then you said you didn't. Will the real Liz Truss please stand up? <laughs> Brilliant. Then came the turn of the former Chancellor. Is there a point that you would stand aside in this campaign? The quick answer is no. And that's because... Well, thank you. <laughs> You've been campaigning for a long time and it was perfectly timed, a cynical motivation to try and get you into number 10. No, so that's, that's just that. sim simply not true. So I was due to give a speech with the Prime Minister the next week and in the conversations about putting that speech together on the economy, it was clear our differences were too big to reconcile. Okay. So that was the reason. Plus, I think, let's not, we'll not look at the, the bass with rose-tinted spectacles here. Everyone remembers what was going on with Chris Pincher. Yeah. Um, how will you balance the need to address the escalating cost of living crisis, particularly for those that are on lower incomes, alongside the need to keep the economy in good order? The lights on the economy are flashing red and the root cause is inflation. But from economics to a rare test on foreign policy for the former Chancellor. On the conflict in Ukraine, Boris Johnson has um, really thrown himself into the cause. I think everybody might agree with that. He's regarded as a hero, apparently, in Ukraine. That's what he tells us. He brandishes his missile launchers. We've seen that. Are you really tough enough to stand up to Vladimir Putin? Yes. I'm tough enough. And I'm already delivering the measures that are actually causing him the most trouble. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> And the applause for the former Chancellor kept coming. People feel that you can't walk a mile in their shoes because you're walking in your Prada shoes. What would you say to them? <laughs> I think the British people judge people by their character and by their actions, not by their bank account. <laughs> it looks to me as though Mr Sunak convinced you far more than uh, Ms Truss. Once again, Rishi Sunak delivered on detail, but this contest may well be decided on ideas and the instinct of Tory members. 
He may have won the room, but the Foreign Secretary remains on course to be the next Prime Minister. Ali Fortescue, Sky News.